Hi, my name is Matti Tahvonen. I'm going to introduce you to the latest and greatest version of our integration test product called TestBench. This version is based on WebDriver, aka Selenium 2. In addition to all cool features of Selenium 2, TestBench provides much smoother Vardin integration and provides some nice additional features like screenshot comparison. We will be publishing a series of video tutorials. In this first part, I will just show you how to download and install the product and how to play with the Maven Build example project, which is included in the package. As you have seen, I have already downloaded the product from Vardin website. Now let's start to play with the included demo project. It is a Maven built web application project, so the first step is to install the jar file to my local Maven repository. If you are not using Maven or Ivy, there is a separate standalone jar file that contains all the external dependencies. Next step is to import the project into your favorite IDE. I am using Eclipse here, but you are by no means tied to it. Now if you look at the project, we can see a very simple Vardin application there. Pretty similar to what we have on our in one of our demos. In the test directory there are some example tests built with Vardin test bench. The build process is configured to execute these tests automatically during the build. Maven deploys the web application with Jetty plugin and then uses TestBench to command Firefox. You can see it popping up during the build process. In case you are using plain old Ant for your build system, you can configure it to run TestBench tests in the same manner. They are most often in JUnit format, so the setup is quite easy to make. That was the last test, and all those tests were passed, and the build was successful. Now let's look at what those actual test files have eaten. Instead of the HTML files used by the previous version, tests are now stored as Java files. JUnit is the default file format. The magic happens around WebDriver API, which is wrapped with a test bench to add some more goodies. The code is so clean that you can easily modify it too. When you are developing your web application or your tests, you most often have the project continuously running in a web server. I will launch it here with Jetty plugin. Now that the application is running, we can use the built-in IDE features to run individual tests. Again, you can see the Firefox popping up and executing the tests. Eclipse will show the results as with any other JUnit test. Now let's make one stupid change in the test and use Eclipse to re-execute the test. On this execution, we should see some errors popping up to the Eclipse UI. So, the result is expected and we can easily go to the line where the error actually happened. That's it for the first part. Thank you for your interest. In the next episode, we will look into creating new tests with the help of the recorder tool.